Ito pala ang pakampuan natin ng ating Panginoon. Ngayong umaga, meron akong tanong. I want you, kung pwede natin gamitin yung ating uh, chat box, yung ating comment section sa ating mga kasama sa FB. Simple lang naman yung mga questions ko uh, sa mga susunod na mga saglit. May tanong. Una kong tanong. Ano ang kulay ng bubble gum? Ah, napakadali lang, di ba? Ano ang kulay ng bubble gum? Dali. Uh, I want to see your answer. Tingnan natin, baka may iba't ibang sagot. Baka may kulay uh, uh, burgundy. Baka may sumagot. Oh, gray. Oh, malamang gray kasi gray yung nasa picture. <laughs> Typically, ano pong kulay? Pink. Oh, may sumagot ng pink. Pink. Ah, madaming sumasagot ng uh, off-white. May off-white daw. May white, may pink, may red. Okay. Salamat po sa pagsagot. Bakit kaya pink? Naalala nyo siguro yung bazooka, no? Kasi yung bazooka, um, famous sa uh, bubble gum sa Pilipinas. Bubble gum, typically pink. Yan. O traditionally, kulay pink daw po. Kasi nung 1928, si Walter Daimer accidentally daw created yung first successful successful batch ng bubble gum while playing with different kind of recipes. He made it pink dahil nung mga panahon na yon it was the only food coloring available in the factory. Ah, sabi nila, ang bubble gum daw ay pink. Kapag hindi pink, chewing gum. Yun daw po yung pagkakaiba noon. Pag bubble gum, pink. Pag hindi, uh, pag hindi daw pink, chewing gum. Bakit kaya ang sagot natin karamihan sa atin ay pink? Dahil kinalakihan natin na ang kulay ng bubble gum ay pink. So may isa pa akong tanong. Ulit, gamitin natin. Let's, let us utilize yung ating chat box. Let us utilize yung ating uh, uh, comment section. At least a little personal question. Ito ang tanong ko. Makinig po ang lahat. Sa mga anak, sa mga nanay, lahat tayo naging anak, di ba? Ano ang masasabi nyo sa inyong ina, nanay, Mama, inay, mami, mom, mudra, or kung ano paman. Kung paano nyo paman tawagin ang inyong mga nanay. I will give you maybe, sabi natin, 10 seconds to answer. Yan. Ano yung mga palagay tungkol kay inay? Yan. Gusto kong makita. Matatag. Ah, sagot ni Pastor Ruel. Matatag daw. Sige po. Most loving and caring mom. Persevering. Strong. Mapanalanginin, protective, the best, uh, masipag. Uh, napakaganda ng mga masasabi natin sa ating mga ina. Alam nyo ba, ang opinion natin tungkol sa ating mga ina, o maging sa mga tatay na rin, ay base daw po yan sa edad. Anong ibig kong sabihin na base sa edad? Basahin po natin ng sabay-sabay itong isang uh, nakuha ko in one of the sermon illustration na ang nagsasabi, Kapag four years of four years of age, ang sinasabi daw po ng mga bata is, my mommy can do anything. Would you agree? Di po ba? Kahit ano kaya ng gawin ng mommy ko. Ah, four years of age. Pag daw mga eight years of age, my mom knows a whole lot. Madami ang alam ng nanay ko. Ah. 12 years old. Ito yung mga graduating na ng grade 6 sa mga panahon natin. Yung iba kasi, K-12, K-12 na ngayon. My mother doesn't really know quite everything. Hindi talaga alam ng nanay ko ang lahat. Ito na. Papasok na tayo sa teen, teenagers na panahon. 14 years. Naturally, mother doesn't know that either. Natural, hindi alam ni ina yon. Sa so, may mga anak na mga teenagers, nakaka-relate po ba tayo dyan? 16 years. Mother, she's hopelessly old-fashioned. Si inay, oh, makaluma yun eh. Hmm? ba? Diba? Hindi natin masabayan yung mga anak natin sa, sa fashion natin. So sinasabi ng mga anak natin, makaluma ka daw ang mga magulang. 18 years, medyo paharsh na ng paharsh. That old woman, she's way out of date. Yung matandang babae na yon, laos na siya. So 25 na. Well, she might know a little bit about it. Well, baka alam niya ang tungkol dito. 35. Before we decide, let's get mom's opinion. Bago tayo magdesisyon, kunin natin ang opinion ni nanay. And 45 years of age, I wonder what mom would have thought about it. Iniisip ko 
kung ano ang pwedeng is- naisip ni nanay tungkol dito. Yeah. You see, how we give opinion o ano yung masasabi natin sa isang tao base sa ating edad. Di po ba? Nakaka-relate kayo. I know, na-experience natin yan bilang mga anak at bilang mga magulang na rin. Nasabi natin, ganun din siguro ako. Ganun, ganun din ako nung bata ako sa aking mga magulang. Then we experience it as parents. Yan. Yan po yung tinatawag natin palagay or opinion natin sa ating mga magulang. It varies. Depende kung anong edad at kung anong sitwasyon, kung anong experience ang ating nararanasan during the time we have given the opinion sa ating mga magulang. Another one, naalala ko yung anak ko. Yan. Ano pong masasabi nyo? Baliktad ba yung pagkakasuot ng sweater or tama lang? Naalala ko kasi yung anak ko, magkasama kami. Nagsuot siya ng sweater, baliktad. Sabi ko, anak, it's baliktad. Sabi niya, no, tatay, it's okay. It's my style. Ah. So, hinanap ko nga, kung may nagsusuot ba talaga ng sweater na baliktad. Then, I, I saw this one sa, sa Google. Ewan ko kung fashion ba to o, o gusto lang nila. But what I'm talking about is, what I'm trying to ay sabihin sa bawat isa, yung chewing gum na tinanong ko kanina, bakit siya pink? Because it's tradition. Kinaugalian. Yung sinabi natin tungkol sa ating mga nanay, opinion natin yon, Ating mga palagay. At yung baliktad na sweater, it's the preference or kagustuhan. Yan. So ang theme natin for this month, uh, One Church. Ang ating mga pastor, ang mga preachers natin were able to share or was able to explain about the church, the anatomy, the different churches, the unity and diversity, at kung paano kumilos ang uh, simbahan. As tanong niyo sa akin, anong kinalaman pastor ng tradisyon? Anong kinalaman ng opinion? Anong kinalaman ng preferences? Sa theme natin ngayon, bakit ko nga ba nabanggit ang mga bagay na ito? Para makita natin ang relasyon nito kung paano natin ma-define ang salitang church or simbahan. You may ask, ano ba talaga ang definition ng simbahan? What is the church? Ang una natin gagawin to answer that question, syempre mag-google. Tatanungin natin si Miriam Webster. Miriam Webster, what is the church? Ito ang isasagot sa inyo ng Google. First, a building that is used for Christian religious services. Ito daw po ay isang gusali na ginagamit para sa mga serbisyong pangrelihiyon ng mga Kristiyano. The second one, religious services held in a church. Mga gawaing pangrelihiyon na ginaganap sa isang simbahan. Ang simbahan sa definition number two is uh, defined in number one. So, a religious services held in a building that is used for Christian religious services. And the third one, as uh, Miriam Webster defined it, a particular Christian group. Isang particular na grupo ng mga Kristiyano. If you are to observe, o kung maoobserbahan nyo, the definition of the church presented to us by the internet or uh, Miriam Webster in particular, pakita natin dito. Somehow it came from what? It came from tradition, kinaugalian, kinalakihan na natin na ang tawag natin sa simbahan ay ang building. Opinion. ba? Diba? Ang opinion ko sa simbahan ay kung ano yung ginagawa namin sa loob ng simbahan. And the preference. Kung saan ako masayang grupo, yun ang simbahan para sa akin. And to tell you honestly, we often live box church or parang kinakahon natin ang definition ng simbahan as a two-hour program. Dalawang oras na programa on a weekend. In particular, Sabado, dito sa ating lugar, Linggo sa Pilipinas, and Summer Friday Nights sa ating uh, Uh, other satellite churches. We box the church and activity and the program we do. At hindi nga lang isang buong araw. It's only a two-hour program. Ano nga ba ang tunay na biblical definition ng isang simbahan? O by biblical definition of the church? What better way to know the true definition of the word other than from the first one who mentioned it in the Bible? Kilala nyo ba? Kung sino ang unang nagbanggit ng salitang church sa Biblia? May makakasagot po ba? Tumitin natin kung gusto niyo sumagot sa ating comment section and sa ating chat box. 
who is the first person who mentioned the word church in the Bible? Yeah, and I will tell you, it is Jesus Christ himself. Let us read Matthew chapter 16 verses 13 to 20. Uh, please read with me nang may paggalang at uh, may pagpupuri sa ating Panginoon. In verse 13, Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, He began asking His disciples, saying, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? Sa Tagalog po, Nang dumating si Jesus sa bayan ng Caesarea ng Filipos, tinanong niya ang kanyang mga alagad. Sino raw ang anak ng tao ayon sa mga tao? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, and the others Elijah, but still others Jeremiah and one of the prophets. At sumagot sila, ang sabi po ng ilan, kayo ay si Juan na tagapagbagtismo, sabi naman po ng iba, kayo si Elias, at may nagsasabi pong si Jeremiah o isa sa mga propeta. And he said to them, But who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Tinanong ulit nila si Jesus, Tinanong ulit sila ni Jesus, ngunit para sa inyo, sino ako? Sumagot si Simon Pedro, Kayo po ang Kristo, ang anak ng Diyos na buhay. And Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, because flesh and blood did not reveal to you, did not reveal this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. Sinabi sa kanya ni Jesus, Pinagpala ka, Simon, na anak ni Jonas, sapagkat ang katotohanan ito ay hindi inihayag sa iyo ng sino mang tao, kundi ng aking ama na nasa langit. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. The gates of Hades shall not overpower it. At, sinabi sa, at sinasabi ko sa iyo ito. At sinasabi ko sa iyo, ikaw ay Pedro. At sa ibabaw ng batong ito ay itatayo ko ang aking iglesia at ang kapangyarihan ng kamatayan ay hindi magtatagumpay laban sa kanya. I will give you the keys to the kingdoms of heaven and whatever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Ibibigay ko sa iyo ang mga susi ng kaharian ng langit, ang ipagbabawal mo sa lupa ay ipagbabawal sa langit, at ang ipahihintulot mo sa lupa ay ipahihintulot sa langit. And in verse 20, and he warned the disciples that they should tell no one that he was the Christ. At mahigpit niyang iniutos sa kanyang mga alagad na huwag sabihin kanino man na siya ang Kristo. Tayo ay manalangin. Pag-inang salamat pong muli sa umagang ito. Kami patuloy na nagpapasalamat for giving us ng bagong pagkakataon, bagong buhay upang matuto, maranasan at Panginoon, ma-apply namin ang mga bagay na ituturo namin sa mga oras na ito. Gamitin niyo lamang po akong tungtungan ng iyong biyaya, instrumento ng inyong pagpapala, ang salita niyo Panginoon ang tumibo sa puso ng bawat isa, ang boses niyo ang marinig Panginoon at ang presensya niyo ang madama. Let your name be glorified. Buksan ang aming puso at isipan maging uh, Uh, matabang lupa, Panginoon, ang aming mga puso upang lumago ang mga salitang aming matatanggap at maibahagi namin, Panginoon, ang bunga ng mga ito. Muli, Panginoon, Ikaw lamang maitaas. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Yan. Bago natin po pag-aralan or define yung church, we have to know first what is important. Ano yung mahalaga? Ano nga ba ang mahalaga para malaman natin ang tunay na kahulugan ng simbahan. What is important? Balikan natin in verse 13. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, He began asking His disciples, ano yung tanong? Who do people say that the Son of Man is? Sino raw ang anak ng tao ayon sa mga tao? Sino yung tinatawag na Son of Man? Jesus Christ Himself. Si Heso Kristo mismo. And just to remind everyone, Bago po itong verse na binasa natin, yung verse 13 ng chapter 16, at bago ito itanong ni Jesus Christ sa kanyang mga disipulo, maraming mga bagay ang ginawa ni Jesus Christ. If you will read uh, Matthew prior to chapter 16, nandoon siya, siya ay nagturo, yung tinatawag natin uh, Sermon of the Mount in Matthew chapter 5. Siya ay nagpagaling. He cleansed a leper in Matthew chapter 8 verses 1 to 4. He healed the centurion's servant in Matthew chapter 8, 15 to 13. He healed Peter's mother-in-law in Matthew chapter 8, 14 to 16. Many others were healed also. He calms the storm 
in Matthew chapter 8, 23 to 27, he cast out demons. Matthew chapter 8, verse 28. Yung uh, paralitiko ay gumaling sa Matthew chapter 9. Miracles of healing Jesus teaches in parable in Matthew chapter 13. 5,000 fed. Matthew chapter 14, verse 13. Jesus walks on water. Matthew chapter 14, verses, verse 22. Healing of the multitude. Matthew chapter 15, verse 29. At yung 4,000 fed. In Matthew chapter 15, verse 32. Tingnan nyo po ang inyong mga Biblia sa dami ng ginawa ni Kristo. Prior to this question, ang tanong niya, sino raw ang anak ng tao ayon sa mga tao? If I will be rephrasing it, sino ako? Para sa kanila. Ah, di ba? Bakit gaya ganun yung tanong ni Jesus? Is he about to brag sa mga bagay na ginawa niya? Does Jesus wants confirmation and affirmation of how good he is? Ganun ba yung gustong parating ni Jesus? Ang galing ko, no? I have done all of these things. Ano kaya ang sabi nila? Isa nga sa mga example ni Kuya Raymond at ni Pastor Edwin sa kanilang preaching last week and Pastor Edwin kagabi. Uh, no offense intended sa ating mga kapatid. But uh, listen to me very carefully. Kung tatamaan po kayo, uh, talk to me personally. Huwag po natin i-post ito sa ating mga social media accounts. May mga, ga mga gawa daw po tayo sa simbahan. <clears throat> Napagkatatapos ng preaching niya, or pagkatapos ng song lead niya, or pagkatapos niya magturo, itatanong niya either sa congregation or post it sa Facebook. Okay ba yung preaching ko? Uh, anong masasabi mo dun sa line-up nung... Uh, uh, line-up ko kanina. Maganda ba? Ayos ba yung teaching style ko? Hindi ba kayo inantok doon sa aking teaching, teaching style? Ang mga ganitong mga tao is naghihintay ng confirmation upang marinig kung gaano sila kagaling. They are waiting the praise of men. Oh, ang galing mo nga. Ang galing-galing mo. Yun ang gusto nilang marinig. Iyon e ba ang intensyon ni Jesus Christ? Kaya niya tinanong ito. Hindi po. Because in John chapter 5, verse 41, ang sabi ng Panginoong Jesus Himself, I do not receive glory from men. I do not receive glory from men. Ang sagot ng kanyang mga disipulo sa tanong, and they said, some say John the Baptist, at sumagot sila, ang sabi po nila, ah, kayo si Juan na tagapagbautismo. Bakit mababasa rin natin yan within the, the book in Matthew chapter 14, verses 1 to 2? Kasi at that time, he wrote the Tetrarch, heard the news about Jesus and said to his servants, this is John the Baptist. He has risen from the dead. Remember, John the Baptist was beheaded. Pero ang sabi nung ni Herod, nabuhay daw na muli. Si John the Baptist at siya ngayon ay si Jesus Christ. And Elijah, Jeremiah, and one of the prophets. The, the question is, ano yung common among Elijah, Jeremiah, and the prophets. Ano yung common sa kanila? Tinawag silang propeta, they are messengers of God. Mga mensahero ng Diyos. They perform miracles. Ah, di ba? Is Jesus Christ the messenger of God? Sabi nga, di ba ng Panginoong Jesus, ginagawa ko ang mga ito ayon sa kalooban ng aking amang nasa langit. Did Jesus perform miracles? Yes, He did. Anong common pa sa mga propeta? Sila ay mga tao. Is Jesus Christ human? Ang gustong sabihin ng mga disipulo at kung ano yung opinion ng mga tao is telling us Jesus humanity. Naalala niyo yung the first Friday ng ating uh, taon. Pinag-aralan natin yung Jesus humanity. Ang pagkatao ni Jesus. And in verse 15, may pangalawang, may, may follow-up question. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Tinanong ulit sila ni Jesus. Ngunit para sa inyo. Sino ako? Sino yung them? Sino yung you? Ito yung tinatawag natin. Sila po yung the 12 disciples. Kompleto pa. Hindi pa nauubusa, hindi pa nalalagas ang 12 disciples ni Jesus Christ. Ang tinanong niya, yung labing dalawa. Ang unang sumagot. Sino unang sumagot? Si Simon Pedro. Si Simon Peter. Answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Kumbaga, if we will picture out Peter answering, parang very, ano siya, very bold, very proud, na ako ang naunang sumagot. Panginoong Jesus, kayo po ang Kristo o tagapagligtas 
kayo po ang Kristo, ang anak ng Diyos na buhay. Ah, you are the Christ, yung tinatawag nating Messiah or Savior, the Son of the Living God. Ano ibig sabihin? Peter is presenting Jesus' deity o yung pagka-Diyos ni Jesus. Pero ang sabi ng Panginoong Jesus, and Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, because flesh and blood. Ano daw po? Flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. Ano pong ibig sabihin ng flesh and blood? Ang... This world. Because this world this did not reveal it to you. Ano yung this world? Yung pinag-aralan natin kanina, tradition, kinaugalian, opinion, palagay, and your preference did not reveal this to you. Ano yung did not reveal? The tradition did not reveal to Peter that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Opinion did not reveal, reveal to Peter that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. At yung kagustuhan niya ang hindi nagpahayag kay Pedro na si Jesus Christ ay ang Messiah at ang anak ng Diyos. But my Father who is in heaven. Heavenly revelation. Anong ibig sabihin natin dito? Pronouncement from the Lord. Pahayag mula sa ating Panginoong Diyos Ama ang nagsabi na si Jesus na kanilang kasama ay ang tagapagligtas at ang tunay na anak ng Panginoon. With this, malalaman natin kung ano yung importante. Ano nga ba yung importante? The first one is, yung past traditions are insignificant. Hindi mahalaga ang mga nakaraang kinaugalian. People's opinions are irrelevant. Hindi mahalaga ang palagay ng mga tao. Personal preferences are immaterial. Hindi mahalaga ang personal na kagustuhan. What is important is, ano daw po, pronouncement from the Lord is the only truth. Pahayag mula sa Panginoon ay ang tanging katotohanan. And Jesus established what is important. Ang mga disipulo ngayon are now ready to understand the definition of the church. In established the Jesus Christ, ano ba yung mahalaga? Before He will be defining yung salita ng Panginoon. Sabi dyan, ang opinion, tradition, ang opinion, ang preference, are all insignificant when you define who am I or when you define the word church. Tulad ng mga disipulo, ngayon, nawa, handa na rin tayong malaman ano ba ang tunay na kahulugan ng simbahan. What is the church? Ang susunod na talata ay naglalaman ng mga salita Salitang church, wherein, sabi ko nga kanina, it is first mentioned in the Bible and Jesus Christ defined it Himself. Hindi po to sound very technical, but for us to really understand the definition of the church, gusto ko pong malaman ninyo, in hermeneutics or yung interpreting the Bible, there is a rule called law of first mention. Ulitin ko po, in hermeneutics, or interpreting the Bible, there is a rule called law of first mention. Meaning, if it is divine for the first time, it is the definition of the word otherwise stated in the Bible. Law of first mention means it is, if it is defined for the first time, it is the definition of the word otherwise stated in the Bible. As I have said, in this verse, the word church is first mentioned. I also say to you, you are Peter. Sino si Peter? Si Pedro. Sa ating lahat, kilala natin siya bilang ano? Bilang si San Pedro. Yung may hawak ng... Anong hawak ni San Pedro? Okay na po ang bahalang magduktong. I will tell you what, kung ano ang kanyang uh, hahawakan later. Most of you, if not all, are aware that the name Peter is translated which means rock. Uh, and upon this rock, I will build my church. From this creates the most common misconceptions about the church. Yan. Dahil dito, meron daw po mga hindi uh, misconception about the church. Ano-ano yon? I will share you three. Dalawa muna ngayon. Then the third one later. The misconceptions about the church. Number one. Peter built the church. Si Pedro ang nagtayo ng simbahan. Pangalawa, Peter is the head of 
the church, si Pedro ang ulo ng simbahan. Bakit sinabi nating misconception? We will answer that. Kasi ang sabi dito, I will build my church. Who is talking? Jesus Christ. Tama po. Jesus Christ is talking. Sabi niya, I, Jesus Christ, will build my Jesus Christ church. So, the church is built and owned by Jesus Christ. Ang simbahan ay itinayo at pagmamayari ni Heso Kristo. Is Peter, si Peter, si Pedro ba ang nagtayo ng simbahan? Si Pedro ba ang may-ari ng simbahan? Jesus Christ himself said, I will build my church. It is the indication that the church is built and owned by Jesus Christ. Yung pangalawa nating uh, misconception, si Pedro ang head ng simbahan. In Colossians chapter 1 verse 18, ang sabi po doon, he is also the head of the body, the church. And he is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead so that he himself might come to have first place in everything. Sino daw po yung head ng church? Jesus Christ is the head of the church. Si Yeso Cristo ang ulo ng simbahan. So the misconception about Peter being uh, the rock or the builder of the church and the head of the church, the truth is, the church is built and owned by Jesus Christ. Ang simbahan ay itinayo at pagmamayari ni Jesus Cristo. And Jesus Christ is the head of the church. Si Jesus Cristo ang ulo ng simbahan. So kung ganun, we debunk the misconception. Ano ibig sabihin ng Pedro? Ano ibig sabihin ng Peter? Ano ba talaga ang kulugan ng pangalan ni Peter? It's Petros. Yan. Petros means isolated rock or detached stone. I-re-relate natin yung salitang Peter, yung pangalan ni Peter, doon sa rock, maya-maya. But ano ang meron kay Pedro? Peter received revelation from the Lord that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of the Living God. Tama po. Kanina, di ba? But my Father in Heaven revealed this to you. Ano yung reveal kay Pedro? Na si Yeso Cristo ay ang tagapagligtas at ang tunay na anak ng Diyos. Now we define the word rock. What does this small rock means? It's Petra. Mass of connected rocks. Ah, ito daw po yung maraming mga bato na konektado sa isa't isa. Ano ang meron kay Pedro? Revelation from the Lord that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of the Living God. And what is with this mass connected rocks? Anong meron sa kanila? They also will receive the revelation from the Lord that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the Living God. In other words, mga mana ng palataya at mga naniniwala kay Kristo na siya ang Diyos at tagapagligtas. So Peter, the touchstone, the rock, mass of connected rocks or mass of connected stones, both receive revelation or believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of the Living God, our Lord and Savior. Ang sabi ng Panginoon, I will ang Panginoong Jesus, I will build my church. Yan, nabanggit na ito ng ating mga pastor, nabanggit na ating mga preacher natin. Ano ang uh, Greek word ng church? The Greek word po and the pronunciation is the ecclesia. The ecclesia means an assembly or congregation called out from the world to God. The church means an assembly, congregation called out from the world to God. Kung ang rock that will build at doon bubuin ni Kristo ang kanyang simbahan, it is a congregation called from the world to God. What is now the church? Number one, called out believers. Tinawag ng mga mananampalataya. The church, the first definition is called out believers. Nabanggit din, tulad din na banggit ni Pastor Mon last week, if you are attentive enough to remember, the church or the ecclesia, as na nabanggit niya ron, is a legislative body. Bakit kaya? Bakit kaya nasabing it's a legislative body? Let us all continue. Jesus said, The gates of Hades shall not overpower it. What do you mean by the gates? At yung authority or power. Ano yung Hades? Hades means... Unseen world, darkness, 
Yan. So, pag sinama nating the gates of Hades, the power and authority of darkness. Ano nga ba yung power and authority of darkness? Ay, tatawag nating disobedience, sin, and death. Ang sabi dyan, the gates of Hades shall not overpower it. It will always try to infiltrate the church. But the fact is, Jesus Christ said it himself. He built the church. It is my church. The power of disobedience, sin, and death, no matter how they try, will not overpower my church. Ang pagsuway, ang kasalanan at ang kamatay, pasukin ang simbahan na tinayo ng Panginoong Jesus. But no matter how they try, sabi dyan, shall not overpower it. Hindi ibig sabihin walang managkakasala sa loob ng simbahan. These gates of Hades will try. Will try to overpower the church. But if it is Christ church, no matter how they try, they will never overpower the church of Christ. In verse 19, I will give you the keys. Uh, give you the keys. Dito papasok yung ating third misconception when it comes to church. Ang sabihin natin when it comes to Peter. Sabi niyan, very common ito sa ating lahat. Na si San Pedro daw ang sasalubong sa atin pagdating sa langit. Yan. Siya ang may hawak ng manok. Ay, hindi po. Siya ang may hawak ng susi. Ang sabi dyan, keys. Misconception about the church. Peter holds the key to entering heaven. Hawak ni Pedro ang susi sa pagpasok sa langit. Sino pong naniniwala na hawak ni Pedro ang susi sa langit, taas ang kamay? Ako lang. Hindi po ako naniniwala. Huwag po kayong uh, maniwala sa akin na sinabing naniniwala ako kay Pedro. Dahil ang sinabi ng Panginoong Yesus, Jesus Christ said it Himself. Jesus said to Him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Maliwanag po na sinabi ng Panginoong Yesus na hindi si Pedro ang may hawak ng susi sa pagpasok sa langit. Sino ang may hawak? Who have the way? Who is the way? Who is the truth and who is the life? Na pwede nating uh, maging susi sa pagpasok sa kaharian ng ating Diyos Ama. And that is through Jesus Christ alone. Maliwanag po ang sinasabi ng Biblia na si Kristo ang tanging susi sa pagpasok sa kaharian ng Diyos. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever. Yeah, kingdoms of heaven. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Ano po yung kingdom? Let us define the kingdom first. Kingdom means sovereignty, authority, rule, especially of God, both in the world and in the hearts of men. Yung kingdom daw po nito, itong kaharian na to, tinatawag na sovereignty, authority, rule, especially of God. Sovereignty, authority, rule ng Panginoon will be given to what? To the church, both in this world and into the hearts of men. Ano ba yung sovereignty dito? Self-governing state. Remember, the church is called a legislative body. Binigyan tayo ng otoridad, binigyan tayo ng rule of God to be exercised to this world and in every man's heart. A church is a sovereign government strategically placed to a world other than its own. Ulitin ko po, ang simbahan daw po is a sovereign government strategically placed to a world other than its own. Ang simbahan ni Kristo ay hindi sa mundong ito. It belongs to the kingdom of heaven placed on earth. Para saan? I will tell you later. Pero may tanong muna ako. Ano po ito? Sa mga nakakaalam. Ano po ito at saan po ito matatagpuan? Yan. Walang nakakaalam. Kunti lang ang pumupunta kasi dito. Kasi ang pinupuntahan po natin is doon sa consulate sa Dubai. This is po yung Philippine Embassy in Abu Dhabi. Ito po ay sa Abu Dhabi, the Philippine Embassy located in Abu Dhabi, UAE. A small Philippines operating under the rule and regulation of our country habang naririto sa bansa ng UAE. Once you step on that door, the rule of our country prevails. Ah, pag pumasok ka daw po dyan, sa loob ng embassy natin, makikita mo ang Pilipinas. I will not say anything negative, nabanggit na po yan ni Pastor Mon, but you will see the Philippines inside the Philippine Embassy. 
Ganon din po ang ating simbahan. The church is heaven's representative on earth. When you enter a church or a group of believers, dapat yung rule of heaven applies. Ang tanong kasi dun, does it really apply the way it should be? It should be the rule and authority of heaven moving from the church outside to a place where it is placed. Applying what the Bible says while we are on earth. Hindi po the other way around. Ang nangyayari po kasi, we do not put the rule or the influence of the world into the church. The rule and the influence of the church should be put into this world. Please observe. Pansin niyo. Pansin niyo yung ating simbahan, yung ating pamilya, or any other church you go to when you are not here in UAE. O yung mga kapatiran natin dyan sa FB, kung saan man kayo naroon, mga kapatiran natin dito sa Zoom sa Pilipinas, or kung saan man bansa kayo naroon, please observe the churches you are going to. The question is, para sa atin, sa ating simbahan, are we exercising the rule and authority of heaven? Or we are just doing dalawang oras na programa sprinkling a little bit of Jesus for it to look like a church. Nakakalungkot. Yan na yung trend ng mga simbahan ngayon. A lot of worldly activities, a lot of other priorities, they will just sprinkle a little bit of Jesus' name for it to be sound spiritual. But it's the rule and authority of the church or heaven is being exercised inside. Please observe. Tingnan natin. And whatever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatever you shall lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Yan. Papasok tayo dito ngayon sa doctrine of binding and loosing. Pagbabawal at pagpapahintulot. Maraming mga nag-a-argue when it comes to binding and loosing. I will not argue with, with that but I will present to you what is the context behind the binding and loosing. Do you know that binding and loosing is a Jewish legal term? Oh, di ba? Embassy na. Na ba tayo? Legislative pa. Then legal term pa. Binding and loosing is a Jewish legal term. Binding means forbidding, declaring to be improper or unlawful. Loosing, allowing, permit or declare lawful. Church po ang ating pinag-uusapan. Tama po? Jesus Christ defined the church or defining the church sa kanyang mga disipulo na mention niya tong binding and loosing. It is a legislative body ang simbahan na sabi natin kanina, an embassy of heaven dito sa mundong ito. The context of binding and loosing is a legislative action or exercise of authority within the church. Basahin po natin in Matthew chapter 18, verse 18, wherein binding and loosing was mentioned for the second time and the last time in the Bible by Jesus Christ Himself. Ang sabi niya ron, basahin muna natin sa verse 15. Hindi ko po na nailagay dyan, I will read it uh, to you. If your brother sins, go and show him his fault in private. If he listens to you, you have won your brother. But if he does not listen to you, take one or two More with you, so that by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every fact may be confirmed. If he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen even to the church, let him be to you as Gentile and a tax collector. And in verse 18, truly I say to you, whatever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Heaven. Verse 19, again I say to you that if two of you agree on earth, anything that they may ask, it shall be done for them by my Father who is in heaven. The most misquoted verse in verse 20, for where two or three have gathered together in my name, I am there in their midst. Ano po yung context? What is the context? The context is a sinning brother. Pag sinabi natin kapatid, kasama sa pananampalataya. And the role of the church in reproving and winning them back, in releasing and keeping them. It is the delegated authority given to the church to exercise, to practice, and to execute inside the church context. 
Paalala mga kapatid, bilang mga simbahan, bilang mga called out believers, na pahayag na si Kristo ang Diyos sa tagapagligtas, naniniwala na si Kristo ang ating tanging Panginoon na tagapagligtas. We have been given the authority as a church to lead His people in obedience to His word and His commandments. Kailangan natin to stand firm to what the Bible says. Be firm and decisive, but remember, always with love. We have done this before. Yung ating mga leaders, yung ating mga pastors na nagdaan, they have exercised this authority. Nakakalungkot nga lang, when you uh, reprove or tinatama mo ang mga kapatiran, more often than not, they leave the church. But ang sabi ng Panginoon, do what is right. I have given you the authority to bind and to lose in a church context. Kung babasahin natin sa amplified version, yung bound in heaven, ang ibig sabihin niya, must be what is already bound in heaven. Kung babasahin natin, bind on earth shall be what is already bound in heaven. What you lose on earth must be what is already loosed in heaven. Please remember this. It is not that we have the power to change God's mind. Wala po tayong kapangyarihang baguhin ang isipan ng Panginoon. The truth is, it is we are given God's mind with regards to conflict in the church. Who revealed, the who revealed to the disciples who Jesus Christ is? It's God the Father. Would He not reveal to the disciples what they need to do with conflict in the church? Mga kapatid, we are privileged as a group of Christ believers. Alam niyo kung bakit? Because lahat ng kailangan natin were revealed or will be revealed to us sa pamamagitan ng kanyang salita, ang Biblia. Ano ngayon ang simbahan? What is now the church? Ang una nating definition is called out believers. Tinawag na mga mana ng palataya. Ano yung pangalawa? Authorized believers. Pinahintulutan na mga mana ng palataya. To illustrate that, Yan. Ano po yung nakikita nyo? Dalawang basketball player at referee na walang bola. Hindi po, hindi lang po kasi nakita sa, sa screen yung bola kasi binato ng referee na mataas. The authority given to us by the Lord is compared to the authority given to a group of referees during any game. Anong ibig kong sabihin? Kung mapapansin nyo kung nanonood kayo ng mga sports, especially yung uh, ball games, Uh, particularly yung basketball, the players are bigger, taller, stronger, and faster. Tama po. At mapapansin nyo rin yung mga referee are smaller, shorter, weaker, and slower. But what separate the referees from the competing teams, ano ang pinagkaiba ng mga referee doon sa dalawang team na naglalaban? The referees have the power of binding and losing. They have the authority to call it a foul and not to call it a foul within the bounds of the rules written in a book given to them to study, to learn, to memorize, and to understand before they apply it in the actual game. Bilang mga mana ng palataya ni Kristo, we are given the Bible. The Bible para saan? To study, to learn, to memorize, to understand before we apply the authority given to us sa mundong ito. Sabi nga dito, the authority, because of pressure, yan, panggigipit ng mundong ito, instead of exercising the authority given to us by the Lord, we go for prestige. Karangalan, we go for power, kapangyarihan, we go for pleasure, kasiyahan. Instead of being the authority of any competing teams, we take sides. We go with this world instead of being the authority of the church given to us by our Lord Jesus Christ. The story in Joshua, nung nakita ni Joshua yung isang angel of the Lord na nagpakita sa kanya, ang tinanong, sa, tinanong niya doon sa angel, whose side are you? Sa amin ba? O sa kalaban? Alam niyo yung sagot ng angel? Neither. I am the captain of the Lord's army. I come to take over. Ganun dapat ang simbahan ng ating Panginoong Hesus. You do not take sides, you come 
to take over. The angel said, yun ang sabi ng angel, I have come to take over. Ganun din nawa tayo pagdating sa lahat ng bagay maging sa politika. Do you know what divides yung mga tao? Kahit gaano pa sila ka-close. Talk about politics. They will be separated in a minute. Tandaan natin, bilang mga Kristiyano, you do not take sides. You take over. In the last verse, last verse na po tayo. And he warned the disciples that they should not They should tell no one that he was the Christ. At mahigpit niyang iniutos sa kanyang mga alagad na huwag sabihin, kanino man na siya ang Kristo. Parang magulo, Pastor. Bakit kaya? Hindi ba bilang isang simbahan, we are called to make disciples, to share the good news? Yun yung mission natin, di ba? To make disciples, to share Jesus. Bakit ang sabi ni Heso Kristo dito, huwag niyong sabihin na ako ay tagapagligtas. Jesus did not tell them not to announce that He is the Savior for the rest of their lives. Kung baga, ibig sabihin, not yet. Hindi pa. Not yet. Bakit? Before they could preach that Jesus was the Messiah, they have, they have to learn what that meant. Kailangan nilang maintindihan ang tunay na definition ng tagapagligtas. Imagine, If they had declared Jesus as Christ and then Judas betrayed him. Kung ipinapahayag na nila si Kristo ang tagapagligtas at tinraidor ni Judas si Jesucristo. Imagine they are declaring Jesus is the Christ then Peter denied him. Imagine they are declaring Jesus is the Christ and all of them except Judas and John ay nagtago during his crucifixion. Would their testimonies be valid? Would their testimonies be believable? Hanggang sa hindi nila nauunawaan ang salitang tagapagligtas. Hanggat hindi nila na-experience personally ang tagapagligtas o yung uh, saving grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. At kung hindi pa sila indwells of the Holy Spirit, hindi nila maipapahayag kung ano ang tunay na ibig sabihin ng binago at niligtas ni Kristo. Remember, the Great Commission was given to the disciples after Christ resurrection dahil na unawaan na experience at kanilang na isa puso ang tunay na kaligtasan na nagmumula kay Kristo until that time that we personally experience the amazing saving grace of the Lord Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit we cannot truly and fully declare who Jesus Christ is observe Sino ang nagpapahayag kung sino si Kristo? Nang buong puso, with old boldness, it is those who experience the saving grace of Jesus Christ. And what is the church? The last definition that we have. Called out believers, yung number one, tinawag ng mga mana ng palataya. Authorized believers, pinahintulutan, nabigyan ng kapangyarihan ng Panginoon. At yung pangatlo, sent out believers. Isinugong mga mana ng palataya. After knowing the biblical definition of the church, these are my last questions for today. May, may tanong pa akong last. Pero bago yan, please don't get me wrong. In the context of the modern day church or churches, we have different ministries. Di po ba? Marami tayong iba't ibang ministeryo. We have a, a lot of activities. We have different uh, programs. Lahat ng ito ay vital parts in fulfilling the call of God to each and every one of us. But knowing the definition of the church given to us by Jesus Christ Himself, my question is, kung walang building, wala tayong building ngayon. We are doing, I'm sharing to you the message of the Lord via Zoom. Kung walang building, is it still a church? If there is no music, salamat sa buhay ng ating uh, music team. Nakita natin kung I saw the effort kung paano nila ibinigay yung kanilang uh, talent and time para sa ating prison worship today. But a question is, if there is no music, is it still a church? If there are no activities like anniversaries, family day, Christmas parties, and the likes, kung wala lahat yon, 
hindi nga natin naranasan ng mga nakaraan taon. Is it still a church? Please observe. Examine ourselves. How do we define the church? May napagsabi nga sa akin tungkol sa isang programa ng ating simbahan. This is a personal uh, experience na sabi sa akin ito. Tungkol sa isang programa natin, sabi niya, uh, Pastor, dapat itigil na natin niya kasi ang sabi niya is, hindi naman po kasi yan ginagawa ng ibang simbahan. Studying the history of Christianity, alam niyo ba, we are doing a lot of things that they have not done in the early centuries of the church. May mga bagay tayo, marami tayong bagay na ginagawa na hindi ginagawa ng na mga naunang kristyano sa loob ng context ng simbahan. And they have done the most important thing that we are not doing nowadays. Ulitin ko, and they have done the most important thing that we are not doing nowadays. Be bold for Christ all the days of their lives. Be bold for Christ all the days of their lives. We call ourselves Christians. Pinag-uusapan natin ang salita ng Panginoon. We talk about Jesus for two hours on a weekend during the worship service. Two hours on once a week during sa ating mga SBC meetings. The rest of the days and the rest of the hours, we act as we are part of this work and not ambassadors of God. Ayan ang ginawa ng mga first century Christians na hindi na natin nagagawa ngayon. They are bold for Christ all the days of their lives. What is the church? The church is a called out believers. Tinawag ng mga mana ng palataya na paniwalaan na si Kristo ang tanging Panginoon, Diyos at tagapagligtas. What is the church? The authorized believers. We are God's embassy in this world. The rule of the church or the rule of heaven should apply inside and out. Pinahintulutan tayong mga mana ng palataya. And the last is the sent out believers. Tayo ay sinugong mga mana ng palataya. We are not just worker of the church for two hours. Tayo ay sinugo ng Panginoon to work 24-7 declaring Jesus Christ by our words, by our actions, and whatever we do. The truth about the church, balikan lang po natin, the church is built and owned by Jesus Christ. Ang simbahan ay tinayo at pagmamayari ni Yeso Cristo. Jesus Christ is the head of the church Si Yeso Cristo ang ulo ng simbahan. So ngayong pong umaga ating napagbulay-bulayan at nawa, inaunawaan kung ano ang tunay na kahulugan ng simbahan. The purpose kung bakit natin pinag-aaralan ito is to examine, to determine, and to evaluate ang ano, the church we belong to. Evaluate natin ang simbahan kinabibilangan natin sa mga oras na ito. Evaluate din natin ang ating sarili. We as individual belonging to a church. And the purpose ng ating simbahang kinabibilangan. Nabasa natin ang kahulugan, nabasa natin ang pagtawag, nabasa natin yung katotohanan tungkol sa simbahan. It is now our time to determine, to examine and evaluate the church we belong to. We as an individual belonging to a church, our purpose and the purpose of the church. Tayo ay lumakad at humayo bilang mga tinawag, binigyan ng authority upang ipahayag na si Kristo, ah, na si Jesus ay Kristo, Panginoon at Tagapagligtas. Tayo pong lahat ay manalangin. Panginoon, salamat pong muli sa umagang ito. Salamat sa iyong mga salita. Salamat for reminding us ano nga ba ang salitang church at sino kami Panginoon in the context of the church. And what are the authority you have given us at kung ano aming purpose Moving forward, knowing the true definition of your church. Lord, we are called out from this world para sa inyong kaluguran. We have given the, oath, the authority, Panginoon, to bind and loose everything in the context of the church. At kami ay sinugo mo upang ipahayag na si Kristo, ay, uh, na si Jesus ay Kristo, aming Diyos at tagapagligtas. Nawa, Panginoon, ang lahat ng kaalaman, lahat ng revelation, ay tumimo sa aming mga puso at isipan, magamit namin ang mga bagay na ito 
upang magbigay kapurihan sa inyo and to fulfill the purpose and to fulfill the great commission na binigay mo sa bawat mana ng palataya to make disciples to go and teach everything that Jesus Christ have told us nakasulat sa Biblia nakasulat sa iyong mga salita at nakasulat sa puso ng bawat isa. Lord, may we glorify you. Hindi lamang sa mga oras ng aming mga gawain, kundi sa bawat minuto, segundo, at oras at araw ng aming buhay, kami ay patuloy na gamitin mo. Magningning ang aming ilaw, Panginoon. Magkalasa, Panginoon, ang aming mga salita na maging mabangong samyo para sa inyo. At maging, uh, pagbaba, uh, maging makapangyarihan sa mga makakarinig at maunawaan, maisa puso, at ma tanggapin na si Kristo ang aming Diyos tagapagligtas. Muli Panginoon, salamat po. Ito po ang aming samo at dalangin sa pangalan ng anak na si Jesus. Amen and amen. Amen.